This video is part of the Sigma Logic direct control certification process and describes the essential techniques to successfully control the Sigma Logic 7 Modbus servo using Modbus TCP registers. The Sigma Logic 7 Modbus product is designed to be controlled by a host device using the Modbus TCP protocol. The purpose of this e-learning video is to familiarize the user with the data manipulation skills required to interface with this register-based product. Because the host controller could be any non-Yaskawa PLC or PC, Yaskawa is limited in the extent of the support that it can provide for end-user programs. For this reason, Yaskawa has prepared a certification process to ensure that users can be self-sufficient in supporting their code. This video describes the format of the Sigma Logic 7 Modbus data registers in order to prepare the user to submit a certification quiz. The certification is a requirement for this product. The Sigma Logic 7 Modbus is the newest member of the Sigma Logic family of products. The original Sigma Logic and the Sigma Logic 7 Compact are designed to work with a Yaskawa provided set of add on instructions, also known as AOIs, using the Ethernet IP protocol. Here are some of the essential Modbus TCP protocol implementation details. The product supports Modbus function code 4 to read input registers 30,001 through 30,128 and function code 16 to write multiple holding registers 40,001 through 40,128. Data is sent and received by the Sigma Logic 7 Modbus as 16-bit signed integers using 2's complement notation. It also stores its data in Little Indian format. Some data, such as position and speed feedback, is too large to be contained in a single 16-bit register and therefore is mapped into two consecutive registers. The user is responsible for separating and combining these registers as required. An important data transfer concept that must be addressed is the issue of data storage by CPUs. The Sigma Logic 7 Modbus stores data in little Indian format, meaning the least significant byte of data is placed in the lowest number register sometimes called the base register. All the provided documentation will reference the data in little Indian format. If the host device also stores data in little Indian format, the user will not need to rearrange the data. However, if the host device stores data in big Indian format, then data sent across the Modbus TCP interface will be stored with the most significant byte in the lowest number register. This reordering of the data in memory requires extra handling by the user and examples of this situation will be described later in this video. Two's complement is a notation for expressing negative numbers in CPU memory. The simple method involves inverting the bits of the absolute value of a number and then adding one. For example, to arrive at the binary value for the decimal number negative 10, start with the binary expression of the absolute value 10. Then take the complement of each bit, meaning to invert it, and add one to achieve the final expression. Now we will go into specific examples for reading and writing bits, single registers and multiple registers. Finally, we will address how to read ASCII data from a series of registers. It is essential for the host controller to establish and maintain a heartbeat with the Sigma Logic 7 Modbus. This is accomplished by reading register 30,045, bit 0, and reflecting that value back to register 40,003, bit 0. The heartbeat will normally toggle on and off every 500 milliseconds, depending on the reflection response time of the host. If the heartbeat reflection at register 40,003 bit 0 does not change state within one second, the Sigma Logic 7 Modbus will automatically stop all motion and disable the servo. Here is a very simple example of how this response by the host would be programmed using ladder logic. If the contact assigned to register 30,045 bit 0 turns on, it will in turn activate the coil assigned to register 40,003 bit 0. Users of text-based programming languages may need to employ a masking technique to ensure that they are modifying a single bit and not affecting the other bits in that word. Setting the resolution is an example of writing a value to a single 16-bit register. For the Sigma Logic 7 Modbus, recall that all values are sent as integer data. In order to send floating point data, the values are scaled up by a number of implied decimal places to an integer. The resolution register is used to specify the number of implied decimal places. 
Since the resolution setting has a limited range, the value easily fits into one 16-bit register. Commanding target positions will require more data manipulation. The range of target positions is too large to fit within one 16-bit register. Therefore, the user must split the number into two consecutive signed integers and write them to registers starting at 40,033. Register 40,033 will contain the least significant word, also known as the low word, and register 40,034 will contain the most significant word, known as the high word. Here's an example of writing negative 300 to the target position registers. The first step of the process is to scale the value by 10 raised to the number of implied decimal places to create a 32-bit signed integer. In this example, we have the resolution register set to 3. Therefore, our scale factor will be 10 raised to the third power, which is equal to 1,000. We multiply our target position by the scale factor to arrive at an integer value of negative 300,000. Next, place the lower 16 bits into the low word and the upper 16 bits into the high word. It is easier to understand where the bits and bytes are located by expressing this number in binary and hex. The hex equivalent of negative 300,000 is FFFB6C20. So 6C20 will be placed into the low word at register 40,033. And FFFB will be placed in the high word at register 40,034. If the controller stores data in big Indian format, swap the bytes within both words. This will result in the low word changing to 206C and the high word changing to FBFF. Finally, ensure the data type of the final values placed in the registers is expressed as an integer number. If stored in little Indian, the low word 6C20 hex will equal 27,680 decimal. The high word FFFB hex would equal negative 5 decimal. If stored in big Indian, the low word 206C hex would equal 8,300 decimal and the high word FBFF hex would equal negative 1,025 decimal. Here's an example of reading the position feedback from the SigmaLogic 7 Modbus node. The node will automatically convert the floating point number to an integer of desired implied decimal places and place the data into a low and high word as 16-bit integers. Let's say the SigmaLogic 7 Modbus node is reporting a position of plus 270 degrees to the host. The node will put the data into input registers 30,049 and 30,050. First, if the controller stores the data in Big Indian format, swap the bytes within both words to interpret the number correctly. Next, read both 16-bit registers into separate 32-bit variables. Then shift the data in the high word 16 bits to the left. Apply a bitwise OR to combine the two registers into a single 32-bit number and convert that value to a floating point number and divide by the resolution scale factor. The SigmaLogic 7 Modbus alarms are transferred as ASCII data starting at input register 30001. Each ASCII character is represented by a byte of information, so two characters will be placed in each Modbus register. The user will need to employ an ASCII lookup table to convert each character and then concatenate them into a complete string. There are many free ASCII tables available in the public domain to help with this conversion. The length of the alarm string can be found at register 30,002. The characters begin at register 30,003. It is important to use the length value to read the alarm since the characters beyond that value will not be valid in the current alarm. Thanks for watching this video. You have now completed the first step in the certification process. The next steps are to take the quiz, read and sign the memorandum of understanding, and then submit them to training at yaskawa.com. Once a passing score is achieved, credentials will be provided for access to the complete direct control documentation package that fully describes the memory map and each of the available functions for controlling a SigmaLogic 7 Modbus unit. And remember, visit yaskawa.com slash SigmaLogic for videos, documents, software, firmware, AOIs, and more.